It's raining, it's pouring. The old man is waiting for me to review Drag Race. So let's just get right into it. This is season 16, episode three. We are really in the bulk. We are in the meat and potatoes of Drag Race. All the, the premiere hoopla is over and done with. The queens have met. The teams are to, well, not teams. The queens have met, they are together. And now let the games begin. The girls meeting was cute um it was kind of catty some of the girls were coming for the other girls and um it, it gave very early uh seasons of drag race where it was a little more rare and i'm here for it so plasma calls megami the era of drag plasma what, what are we what are we doing honey what are we doing honey plasma also came for Sophia, and i'm like okay Plasma baby, I started out liking you. Like what like what are, like what do we like keep it cute? We had plain Jane who went after Amanda and we said then we say when they come together that the, plain Jane was go, was go, was going to do the most but Amanda held her own and I like the way Amanda handled plain Jane in the sense that she she gathered plain Jane. Okay? Without um, she kept it classy, and I like that. So, Plain Jane really went in on Amanda, especially in Untucked, and I, I don't know if Plain Jane just was doing a lot for TV. I could kind of see on Plain Jane's face was she the moment she realized, oh, I think I've taken it too far. Um, I don't know if she thought the other girls were going to co-sign for her. I don't know... Uh, if she's going for like this Gia Gun villain edit, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, what she's doing. But there's one thing to kiki and and be shady and good fun, and then there's another thing to just like girl, like nobody asked you, like what are you doing? In the meeting of the girls, we also find out that Morphine and Plain Jane are sisters. So is this going to be like a rivalry, or are they going to have each other's back? Now I will say Morphine. Uh, kind of uh I th was standing up for Amanda when plain Jane was was attacking her uh, or was ready to take up for so I, I don't know I'm interested to see how this morphine plain Jane after the girls get to know each other RuPaul walks in with the immunity boxes to present to the two winners from last week with these immunity boxes the two girls plain Jane and Sophia a have a limited amount of time a limited amount of weeks that they can use their immunity potion they can use it on themselves or they can use it to save a sister now i would be very shocked if someone who has immunity decides to use it on someone else um but crazier things have happened on drag race but imagine using your immunity potion to save someone and then the following week you suck and you need it but you've wasted it like oh my gosh like this is gonna get juicy there is no mini challenge this week but we are having a ball darling so the girls will be having the mother of all balls where they have to present three runway looks two that they brought from home and one that they have to make in the work room. So the theme for the three runways is, is Mother Goose, Significant Mother, and Call Me Mother slash Father Eleganza. Now for that third look, that is the look that they have to make in the work room using menswear and crafting it into something fabulous. So this this is kind of a big deal for them to have the, the ball challenge so early in the season so we got a lot of looks a lot of looks so if you didn't really bring it baby you're just you're going to be forgotten you're going to be forgotten you really really got to stand out um i'm confused on why are we in season 16 and there's still girls showing up not knowing how to sew why are we showing up in season 16 of drag race and we don't know how to sew this is not season one or two y'all know how this works you need to have a snatch game character plus a backup, plus maybe an extra backup. You need to know how to sew, okay? You need to have a little bit of a lip sync skill. You need to be prepared to do an acting challenge and you need to be able to, to, to walk, run, walk the runway 
what are we doing? Why don't we know how to sew? Baby, I don't feel sorry for you. So it becomes clear right away that Q and Don are the sewers, honey. They, they, they really come out and they're like, I make my own looks. You know, they're not bragging, but you know, it is eyes on them because these are the girls that they make all of their own looks. So this should be your challenge. Turn it out. Maya can't sew. And, and you know, Maya, I said it last week. Maya, I don't think is ready for this competition. I think she's already in her own head. I'm sure she's a great gal outside of the competition of RuPaul's Drag Race. But it, the, the energy, the energy is like, girl, what, what is going on? So meanwhile, Maya doesn't know how to sew. She has the energy of a log. And she calls herself trying to throw shade at Morphine. And you know, Morphine is the other Miami doll. So I'm like, ciao. Anyways, later on in the episode, we get to a part where we have our one of our first really true heart to hearts in the episode of Drag Race. We know this is kind of a staple event. The girls are doing their makeup and someone asks kind of a personal question. And we have like this heartfelt, slow violin moment. It's become a Drag Race staple and it kind of opens the floor to have these um, bigger conversations about what's going on in the world, usually specific to the LGBT community. And Q opens up about a personal situation that happened with uh, her grandmother. And Q was very close to her grandmother. And then the grandmother was like, I don't like that you do drag. That's disgusting. I don't want anything to do with you. And, and this and that and the third. Q ends up having to end this relationship, this very, very close relationship with the grandmother. And, you know, it just opens up a broad conversation of something that's really going on. A lot of people think that the people choose to be gay and all of these things. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's really, really sad because a lot of the times, these people are alone. And if you think these people are choosing uh, gayness for the price of being alone, being cross-dressers, being trans, being creatures of the night, do you, uh, creatures of the day, being, you know, uh, that's a whole other topic of another video. But, you know, look, Drag Race is all fun and games, but I do like that they take a moment to open up a dialogue so that we can have these bigger conversations after the show goes off. So after some time, Morphine has a little bit of chance of marination. Morphine uh, comes back to throw that same shade that Maya was serving. Morphine came to throw it back, right back to Maya. Now I will say Nymphia this week, she was one, you know, last week I was like, oh, Nymphia, she, she's really, I can see her winning. I see her. I still can see her going far, but this episode, I'm not going to lie. She was kind of getting on my nerves. Um, She was doing a lot. She was running around the room. She was talking and playing and playing and talking. Um, She was being really annoying. I don't know if she was feeling her oats or if she was on speed. I don't, I don't know. But I was like, girl, calm down. Like, you have sickening looks and stuff, but like, I, I really wanted to be like, girl, sit down. Like, it's it's not it's not giving that. After the girls kind of get started, Rue comes back to check on them to see where they're heading with their looks. And there was this funny moment when Rue is meeting with Amanda, and you know everyone keeps talking about Amanda's makeup and stuff. And Rue says, "Oh, Amanda, you know you're prettier without the makeup." And I, I like that Rue kind of has the the banter and. You know, Rue always got to have his little jokes and stuff. I, I live, I live, I live. And Amanda, you know, had a cute little banter. It, it was just a cute little bonding moment. And, you know, if you can make Rue laugh, that's brownie point. So in the meeting with Rue, one person that really worried me was Hershey. Hershey worried me because of the, orig because of the original idea to make this skirt out of like socks or something. And I was just like, I don't know. I don't know where the vision is going. Uh, that look ended up getting scrapped, but more about that look later. 
So after meeting with all of the girls and giving a little bit of advice, Rue lets the girls know that you are going to get to rate each other once again before we give critique. So based on your ratings, that's going to determine, help determine who's going to be in the bottom and who's going to be in the top. So now the girls who were throwing shade and stuff, all of a sudden they won't play all nice and stuff. But we'll, no, no, keep that same energy. Now you realize we got to vote for each other. Now you want to be all kiki. Man, get out of my station. So not only do they find out they get to rate each other again, Rue leaves this little envelope with last week's results of who ranked where. <gasps> Oh, the scandal. So, of course, if you all remember, Plain Jane was was uh, putting the, the, the top people in the bottom and, and was, you know, look, play the game to win. If you want to beat the best, you you know what I'm saying? Put the, put the best at the bottom. Don't vote them higher up and then, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you want to play a, a, a fair game or you want to play to win? It's just, it, at the end of the day, it's just TV, y'all. It's not that serious unfortunately even though it would have been great great for tv the envelope only showed the ranking and the where the girls lied it didn't show who voted for who and how they ended up in that position but like whatever when maya and megami saw how low they were ranked they were both gagged they were like what how me why was i so low i don't understand and I know last week I really went in on Megami, but it, it was it was this moment and maybe a couple other things that th this episode, I, I, I kind of softened up on Megami. I know, I know last week I was like, I can't be bothered. I don't like her. I, I, I hardly even said two words about the girl. And the two words that I did say was mm, not feeling her. But there was there was something different. There was a vulnerability in this episode, I think the mask is starting to fall off. I think last week, you know, the nerves were there. You're trying to put on this confident front and, and stuff like that. And now I see this more sensitive side of Megami. And um, I, I hope that this ranking doesn't bother her too much. And I hope that, um, you know, she just has fun. But it, there was something different about her this week that I'm like, okay, I'll give you a chance. So after the girls look at the results, Amanda takes a piece of paper and shoves it in her mouth and like pretends to eat it. I, I, I felt like that was supposed to, I mean, it was funny, but if someone could tell me, was that like a reference to something? Why, like, why did, why did, was it a reason why she did it? Was it just like a, like a nervous, like, why did, why did she eat the paper? I feel like I missed something. So as the girls continue on working on their garments, someone else I was really kind of worried about was Mirage. And I was like, Mirage, get yourself together. We're rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. <sighs> something else I noticed about this season is that no one's coming in the workroom uh, like in their boy looks no one's really like serving fashion outside of like their their drag looks um and whereas for the last few seasons it's really been a staple that you come in the workroom and turning looks like this is another kind of thing that reminds me of the older seasons where they would come in the workroom ready to work like nobody was giving fashion everybody was just like i'm here let's let's do it so i, I don't know if that's going to change but there's definitely no there's no fashion nieces outside of drag at least not on the show but not that i saw while the girls are getting ready we get another heart to heart moment with maya and hershey and maya asks hershey how her family feels about her doing drag and we found out a lot of the backstory about Hershey having kids and um, how some of her family was not quite on board at first, but now they are fully supporting her and showing up to all of her shows. And uh, it was a really nice story. So now it is time to hit the runway. And I must say, Rue looks amazing. RuPaul always looks amazing, but I really like this look that Ru had. Like, this was cute. This was cute. The judges all look great. There's, there's the, the but drag race is making money. The budget is there. Without further ado, let's take a look at some of these looks, darling. First up, we have Geneva Carr. Geneva Carr. Um, the first look, fine, whatever. Um. I, 
I didn't hate it. It was fine. It, it was it was perfectly fine. The second look was also fine. I I didn't. It didn't, it didn't blow me away. No, and why was it riding up like that? Like, I, I'm sorry. Next, we had Dawn. The first look, I love the makeup. That second look was to die for. I, I That was probably one of my favorite looks of the night. If they, top three, it was just so classic. You knew the reference, you knew what it was trying to give. It, it was drag, but it was fashion, but it was hot. It was, it was whimsical. Oh, I, I, I was like, okay, okay. You talked a big game, and then you, and then you came to serve. Third look to me, it looked like Don was trying to give what Selena S. Titties was trying to do last season. Now I like Selena S. Titties look that she did with the. The thing, y'all go look it up. Y'all know with the whoosh. You know what I'm saying? This is this is good. I'm not mad about it. I like that you actually made it. I'm still I'm not blown away, but it's it's perfectly fine. It's well made. Okay, sure. Next we have Hershey Lacor Jate. You know, all three look of the looks were okay. They Everybody really shredded Hershey. Now that third look didn't bother me so much. I don't know why people hated it so much. I I like that she was trying to present a different style of drag. Everything doesn't need to be overly sexy and naked or uh, clownish. I like that she was giving Michelle Obama. Um, but it is drag race and does it read the same on the runway? I don't know. But the Bumblebee outfit was was cute. I you know, I, I don't know. I they just really tore her up and I was like, dang, I, I didn't think it was that bad, but I mean, you know, I was I'm sitting here in a hoodie, so you know what I'm saying? What I know. All right, next we have Mirage. Mirage was pedestrian, but I don't know. It, it it gave something that I could go on Amazon and buy. But for her to not know how to sew, I really think she turned out a perfectly fine look. Was it best in show? No, but for someone who doesn't didn't know how to put a garment together, she put it together. She gave me a look. I'm satisfied with it. Next we have Megami. Megami's looks were fine. I really like that second look, that construction look. Um, I like these three looks. It gave a concept or whatever. I wasn't, once again, not blown away with any of these. I don't think we have any fashion queens this season. I just don't. I don't think we have any fashion queens this season. I'm so sorry. Um, the clear look, I don't know. I mean, I got the vision. I just did want to go see this feature film. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But I think of the three, I'm feeling the construction worker, Rosie the Riveter type of tease. A mandatory meeting coming through. She's getting better with the makeup. Y'all keep coming for the makeup, it's fine. Now, I... Once again, the looks were middle of the road. I wasn't that bothered by her looks like everyone else was. I think that they were fine. I like that they were a little campy. I like the nod to Michelle Visage. I like the reveal when she did the Michelle. Like, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was cute. I thought it fit her personality. Fine. Morphine. Morphine. I don't know. That, that maid outfit would have been cuter if you had a hip. I do like that second, that black suit with the, the, the half cut with the booby out. I like that. Um, and then the denim look that she made. Okay. Sure, I guess. Then we have Maya. <sighs> Baby, that green look was supposed to be giving Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim where? Of all the looks Lil' Kim did, Baby, no. Um, the look that she made, she did really good for it. somebody else who didn't know how to sew. She really brought it. Now that yellow look, that first look, it, it 
We lost your face, honey. You got swallowed up. That, that yellow looked beautiful on you, but you got lost. She could wear colors really, really well, which we know that brown skin carries colors really well. But I, I like what she made. She really did a good job, but I think the little Kim look really bothered me because I'm like, girl, where, look, look him where. And, and Michelle said what I was thinking. Well, it, it's giving Missy. It, it gave Missy. Then we have Q. Q really turned it out, which I'm not surprised. Uh, the looks, all of the looks that, we, I'm going to say all the looks that we've seen from Q so far from the promo looks to now have been spot on. This is a queen that has a true point of view. They know who they are. They they are comfortable. Um, that middle look with the microphone and the reference and the thing, it was, it was very drag. I would have liked for the wig to be a little bit bigger, but... Overall, I mean, this is this is gonna be a solid queen. This this actually is one of the only look queens that we have. Then we have Miss Nifia Wind. Of course, she's gonna come out very polished. You know, to me, when your attitude is sucky throughout the show, I really don't care what you wear. It's gonna th it's gonna throw me off. Your looks gonna be amazing, but if I if you got on my nerves, then I, I can't get on board. I didn't really care for that white look. Now the look she made with the yellow boot. Okay, I ain't gonna hold you. She took them ties and put some wires in there or whatever she did. I don't know what she did to them ties, but that look, it gave. Sephira. I like that she came out as a pumpkin. I like the coloring of the pumpkin, that it was almost glowing. Um, the Eve costume, I just feel like it's so overdone. I feel like we've seen it. We've been there. We've done that. I do like the long braid, but seeing it, been there, done that. Sorry, Sephira, but, you know, the body was right, but whatever. Um, the third look, I do, well, I liked it. I, I liked it. It was very country chic. It was drag. Uh, it was very Texas. It was, um, it was great. And then we have plain Jane with the black look, the tight. I hate when the tights don't match the skin. Um, the, the Octo Mom baby sash. I see where she was going, but. I don't know. The, the baby doll thing was fine, I, I, I guess. I guess. The plain Jane's blue dress look, it was it was fine. But that black look that she made, baby, just because you used a little bit of fabric and you thought it was gonna save you some time, girl, no. And if you're gonna if you're gonna make something that skimpy, make sure the tights match the body. What? Cause because what are we doing? It was going somewhere, but it never got there. It didn't leave the station. And then we have Tsunami Muse. I love that she came out with, as an egg and then she cracked herself open. Like, hello, the theatrics. It's a really cute look. I I, I liked it. Um, the denim look was an homage to her mother, Candy Muse. I mean, it was a it was a fine look, but I don't feel like that reference happened long enough ago for Tsunami to recreate it. Like, your mother was just on All Stars 8, and she, her, and then Candy's original season was, what was it, like season 13 or something like that? Like, baby, it wasn't that long ago. And plus, like I said, she was just on, it, like, it just wasn't long enough. And I mean, the look was cute, but I'm just like, Okay, I don't know. Um, and then the look she made was... It's very cute. Like, if she wants to sell it, I would buy it. But, baby, Drag Race is no place to make something that's off the rack. We're looking for innovation. Plasma! Um, I was a little disappointed with Plasma. <sighs> the, the black and the yellow look okay whatever but the look that had the puppet i i couldn't fix i don't know i don't know what's supposed to be happening here what is the illusion supposed to be it, it's giving a little too costume um and i'm gonna need for her to do something more with the makeup um it's giving man. I know these are men, but it's give it. it I'm gonna need a little more contour. Or, I, I don't know, baby. You was real confident, and 
the the confidence that you had throughout this episode, these looks didn't stand up to it. And it's something about the walk. Let's get the walk together. I, I don't know how remember how it was last week, but something about the walk this week is what are we doing? And so the winner is Nymphia. And I think that that was, I think, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. If our attitude had been better, maybe I'd be a little more excited about it. But yeah, sure. Okay. So unfortunately, that left in the bottom to Geneva Carr and Hershey LaCour Jete. Now, yes, Geneva was in the top last week. So for her to fall all the way to the bottom, good Lord. Good Lord. That had to be a long, hard fall. Uh, do I agree with the two bottom? I don't know because I didn't think Hershey's looks were that bad. So, but, you know, who am I? Who, who am I? That's just my opinion. So they lip sync to Maybe You're the Problem by Ava Max. I liked what Hershey was giving in the lip sync, but unfortunately the judges did not agree with me, or at least RuPaul didn't. And Hershey was the first girl to go home. And look, the first to go home, like Hershey said, she's in good company. You're up there with Porkchop. Shangela went home first. Um, there's a lot of queens who went home for uh, uh, Miss Vanji. Miss Vanji went home first, and she's probably she was like the most memed queen ever, and she was like meme of the year. So it's like going leaving first has proven to be a token for uh, success in the drag world and in a lot of ways. And then plus there's all it's all stars. Plus you're going to be touring and all these things. I wanted to see more from her. I was not ready for her to go home, but someone's got to go. Someone's got to go. So uh, good luck to you, Hershey. Um, I already follow you on TikTok. I got to join in one of your lives already. Made me really want to see you more because I, I sat on the live and watched you do the little makeup and stuff. But anyway, so good luck to you, Hershey. Can't wait to see more from you. Let me know in the comment section down below what looks were your favorite. Who, who is your top? Who do you think is next to go home? That's all I have to say about Drag Race Zoling. See you next time. Bye.